Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, today's discussion is going to be on genetics. This would apply to maternity nursing or pediatric nursing. You'll hear it discussed or see it in your textbooks or on exams in both of those nursing classes. So let's get started. Um, to begin with, I just want to define a couple of terms. The first is going to be genes. So just think back to your A&P class. This is going to be your basic physical unit of inheritance. This is what is passed from our parents down to offspring or to you know, us as children of our parents. And these genes contain all of the information needed to specify our traits. Everything from the color of our hair to the color of our eyes down to any diseases that we might have. A genome is the entire set of genetic instruction that's found in each cell, and genetic testing can be done on human DNA. So the different types of genetic testing that we encounter as nurses might be single gene disorder testing. It could be carrier screening, so we're trying to find out. Um, we know that a child has a specific um, defective gene, but we don't know if they actually are affected by the disorder or if they're just a carrier of the disorder but still capable of passing that disorder on to their children, possibly. There is predictive testing where maybe we have a history of a genetic um, disease or disorder in the family tree, and we want to predict uh, the chance that a future child might have that disorder. And then the most common one that we really see is population-based screening. So if you've been through any um, newborn content at this point, you've probably heard of the universal newborn screen, sometimes called the newborn metabolic screen. This is an example, a great example of population-based screening. So all newborns um, that are born in a hospital are tested. It's a heel prick or a heel stick for a blood sample. And they, uh, that, um, newborn um, genetic screen or newborn metabolic screen tests for a minimum of 31 core disorders, um, but some states can opt to add or states can opt to add up to 26 secondary disorders. So you could be looking at testing more than 50 disorders um, that are genetic based disorders. So great example of population based screening. Okay, again, just as a recap of genetics, we're going to start with our DNA. And every um, human being has 46 chromosomes. Those chromosomes consist of 23 pairs. You get um, one from each pair comes from each parent. So 23 chromosomes from one parent, 23 chromosomes from another parent, they get matched up to form 20, uh, 46 chromosomes total. Or 23 from one parent, 23 from another, 46 total. Um, of that 23 pairs, we have 22 autosomes and we have one pair of sex chromosomes. When we look at the autosomes, each autosome has um, two alleles for each pair. Those alleles can either be homozygous, which means they're copies of the same trait, or they might be heterozygous, which means one allele is for a different trait than the other allele. On the sex chromosome side, of course, the Y chromosome is the male chromosome. Um, the X chromosome actually means a lot when we talk about genetics, um, and we're gonna learn more about that in just a second. But when you look at how babies are sexed, an XY is going to be a male, and an XX is going to be a female. Okay, when we talk about the word genotype, this is the genetic makeup of an individual and you can look at it in a pictorial analysis like you see here, and that's called a karyotype. So we can actually um, do um, blood testing and we can look at a, a karyotype of all of those 46 chromosomes, uh, 23 pairs of a human being. A phenotype is an observable expression of the individual's genotype. And you can either have dominant expression or you can have recessive expression. Dominant expression is where only one copy of that trait is required in order for the gene, um, in order for that trait to be present on a gene. So you only need one copy. So it can either come from mom or it can come from dad, but you only need one copy for it to be expressed or present 
in that human being. Recessive expression, on the other hand, is where you need two copies of the trait. So one from mom, one from dad. When those combine, that's when recessive expression occurs. So let's start out with talking about some abnormalities. The first is going to be abnormality of chromosome number. So an aneuploidy is when the numeric deviation is not an exact multiple of the haploid set of 23. So we can have monosomies or trisomies. Monosomy is where there uh, is where there is a missing chromosome, so meaning we only have 45. A trisomy is where there's an extra, so now we have 47 chromosomes. The most common well-known example um, of abnormalities of chromosome number is going to be trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome. And if you look at this uh, pictorial analysis right here, you'll see that there are three chromosomes on 21. Every other chromosome number only has two, but 21 has three. Other examples, um, although less common but more lethal, are trisomy 18 and trisomy 13. I think it is important to note, or it definitely is important to note, that abnormalities of chromosome number are the leading cause of intellectual disability in human beings. Another type of abnormality is that of chromosome structure. So your chromosomes are supposed to have a very specific structure. And if you have DNA that's been translocated, um, it's been duplicated, deleted, or inverted, then you can have all kinds of problems. Now, a lot of the abnormalities of chromosome structure do end up in miscarriage or contribute to infertility, but some of them do contribute to birth defect or, or other um, serious um, disorders. Okay, let's talk about the sex chromosomes. So you can have abnormalities on the sex chromosomes. Let's talk about the female first. The most common female deviation is a monosomy X. So remember, females are supposed to have two X. But when there is a monosomy X, and you can see it in this pictorial, uh, this picture, you only have one X. This is known as Turner syndrome. And when you get further into your pediatrics class, you're gonna learn a lot about Turner syndrome, but that is the most common um, female sex chromosome abnormality. On the male side, the most common is trisomy XXY. That's also called Klinefelter syndrome. And if you look at the picture, you'll see this um, male has two X's and only and one Y. They're only supposed to have one Y. So two X's, but one Y. That is called Klinefelter syndrome. Okay, now let's talk about patterns of genetic transmission. So here we're gonna go back to, um, we're gonna talk about multifactorial inheritance and we're gonna talk about unifactorial. Unifactorial inheritance is where, again, we're gonna talk about dominant and recessive. But let's focus on multifactorial first. This is the most common um, pattern of transmission, of genetic transmission. This is where two or more genes act together on different chromosomes. So it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly where these problems are occurring. So two or more genes acting on different chromosomes. Um, they can also act in combination with some kind of environmental teterogen, so an environmental um, substance that is damaging the genes. And that creates the most common defects, birth defects that we see in children. Cleft lip, cleft palate, your congenital heart defects, neural tube defects like spina bifida, pyloric stenosis, um, type 1 diabetes. Those are the most common defects. They're multifactorial. Unifactorial are where only or a single gene is affected. So multifactorial, two or more genes on different chromosomes acting together. Unifactorial, one single gene is involved. Transmission is either going to be autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive. We talked about the autosomes. Remember, there's 22 autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. So autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, or X-linked dominant, X-linked recessive. So let's talk about autosomal first. With autosomal recessive or with recessive transmission, we've already learned that you need two copies of the variant or the problem, the defect, um, in order for it to be expressed in the child. So mom has to contribute a defect and dad has to contribute a defect. 
when they work together, you get expression of that disorder or disease in your child. Now, if only one of the parents contributes the defect, um, those children are clinically unaffected, but they can be a carrier of that defect. But you need two copies, one from mom, one from dad, in order for that kid to actually have an expression of the disorder or the defect. Great examples of autosomal recessive inheritance are phenylketonuria, which is an inborn error of metabolism, sickle cell anemia, and cystic fibrosis. All three of those are autosomal recessive. When both mom and dad contribute that defective uh, gene or that variant allele, um, there is a 25% chance of, that they will pr uh, pass that defect onto each child. Okay, moving on to autosomal dominant. Now we already learned in dominant expression, you only need one copy. It can come from mom, it can come from dad. You only need one copy in order for that kid to have an expression of the defect or the disorder. Um, when that affected parent um, has that defective gene, passes it on to the kid, there is a 50% chance that the offspring will be affected by that disorder or disease. Um, great examples are achondroplasia, which is dwarfism, Huntington's disease, and Marfan syndrome. So in autosomal recessive, both parents have to contribute the defect for it to be expressed, and there's a 25% chance each child will have that disorder if both parents have the defect. Autosomal dominant, only one parent needs to have the defect, and there's a 50% chance that it will be passed on to the child. Okay, let's talk about the X-link side. So autosomal, remember there are 22 pairs of autosomal chromosomes. Now let's talk about that one pair of sex chromosomes. This one is a bit more complicated. Um, X-linked recessive is uh, commonly manifested in males because they have no normal X gene. Females tend to be carriers. So when you have a recessive, um, mom contributes a defect, dad contributes a defect. Remember, it sits on the X chromosome. So if you have a baby girl, she has a defective X and an unaffected X. The unaffected X tends to overshadow the defect and that little girl is a carrier. Boys, however, on the other hand, only have one X and it is defective. And that's why we tend to see these disorders more commonly in males. Examples, hemophilia. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, fragile X syndrome, those tend to be predominantly male disorders. Males only have one X, females have two Xs. The normal X in the female or the unaffected X in the female will overshadow the defect, making them a carrier. Boys will be affected. X-linked dominant inheritance. Um, females are going to transmit again that variant allele. There is going to be a 50% chance of transmitting the variant to e each offspring. And because it's dominant, um, these tend to be lethal disorders. An example is vitamin D resistant rickets. Um, so your much more common X linked disorders are recessive disorders. Let's look at some examples of these um, X-linked recessive inheritance or how this inheritance plays out. Now this square that you'll see is a Putnam square. So think back to maybe you talked about it in AMP, but definitely you probably talked about it in high school biology. So let's walk through this uh, Putnam square. It's a really good way to quickly determine what um, a risk is from parent to child. So in X-linked recessive, let's say we don't know what dad is. We don't, maybe we, mom's just trying to decide what her risk is for passing this defect on. It's a recessive defect. So here's your mom. Um, a big H is um, an unaffected allele. The small H is an affected allele. Because remember, you have two allele, alleles on each chromosome. So mom has an unaffected and an affected. So in dad, we don't know what dad is. So um, this uh, first female is gonna be normal because mom is not, remember X-linked um, disorders come from mom. So this first female from the mom is getting a normal X and she will be a normal female. 
your second female is getting a defective X from mom. We don't even know what dad is, but this baby girl is getting a defective X from mom. So she will be a carrier at a minimum, a carrier. And we're gonna do an example in a minute where the dad may have the defect. But in this case, female carrier. Your next child um, let's, is going to be a male, um, unaffected male because not um, inheriting the defect from mom. That's the big H. Second male, getting the defective X from mom. Now we know that when males get the defected X, they are affected. Females, when they get the defective X, tend to be carriers. Males, when they get it, are going to be affected. So in this scenario, we have a 25% chance of having a female carrier. We have a 25% chance of having a female non-carrier or normal child. We have a 25% chance of having an affected son. And we have a 25% chance of having an unaffected son. Let's look at a scenario where Um, mom is a carrier, so she has that normal H, uh, nor, uh, normal X, and she has that abnormal or affected uh, defective X. And dad is actually going to be affected. So let's say that this is a hemophiliac dad. So dad has hemophilia, mom is a carrier for hemophilia. This is going to change the game a little bit. So let's look at this. So we have mom contributing her normal um, gene, dad contributing his defective gene. Remember, dad has the disorder, so both of his alleles are defective. Mom is a carrier, so one is normal, one is defective. Their first child, a female, is going to be a carrier. She got normal and abnormal. Next child, female, is going to be affected. Got the defective gene from mom and the defective gene from dad. This is how you see females with hemophilia. Next, you're going to have um, a male who has um, a normal gene from mom, abnormal from dad. This is an unaffected male because remember, the defect sits on the X chromosome, which is what mom contributes. Um, your next male gets defect from dad. Remember, these are recessive. Defect from dad, defect from mom, affected. This, this male has hemophilia. So in this case, you, uh, of your female children, 50% are going to be affected, 50% will be carriers. Of your males, one is going to be unaffected, the other is going to have hemophilia. So hopefully running through those examples um, was helpful. Okay, let's talk uh, just briefly about inborn errors of metabolism. These are um, disorders, they are, they are genetic, they affect normal metabolism. There's about 350 recognized inborn errors of metabolism. Um, there, what, what happens is, is there's a damaging accumulation of some product in the body. So for example, in phenylketonuria, the damaging product in the body is phenylalanine, which is an amino acid found in protein. The body can't process it. If you have phenylketonuria, it builds up in the body and it starts to damage the body. But because it's genetic, these are disorders that are affecting newborn babies. Other examples are galactosemia and congenital hypothyroidism. Remember, there's about 350 inborn errors of metabolism. Almost all of them are autosomal recessive inheritance. We just talked all about autosomal recessive. And many of them are tested as part of the universal newborn screen. Now, certainly not all of them, but the most common ones are, you, are part of that universal newborn screen, that population-based testing. Okay, so hopefully, I know that was a quick overview of genetics, but hopefully it was helpful. Um, on this slide, there are two great videos from Khan Academy. The first one is an introduction to genetics, and it discusses autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive. The second one is uh, all about X-linked recessive traits. 
And the example that we went through where the father had hemophilia and the mother was a carrier, that is the exact example that Khan Academy goes through in that video. So if we went, when we went through that example, if it was really confusing to you, that is a great video to watch. Both of them are um, somewhere around five minutes and um, will really help you understand these patterns of inheritance that you could possibly see on exams. It's also important to note those most common disorders in all the categories, X-linked, autosomal dominant, and autosomal recessive. Of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment or to reach out to me via email or on my Twitter account. Have an awesome day.